Rachel, everybody. Thank you so much. I'm Stephen Colbert, your host for the evening. And, well, winter has finally come. Everywhere I look, Man. I see people just bundled up and shivering, and that's just in this theater. <laughs> Speaking of uh, Chile, uh, Russia continues to make the news. There's another bombshell, just found out today, oh. another bombshell about Russia hacking our election. Senior intelligence officials now believe that Vladimir Putin was personally involved in our election hack. Kind of flattering he wanted to do it himself, don't you think? <laughs> you know, it's handcrafted. Yeah, yeah. It's an artisanal hack. Right, right. You know, he cared enough. Word is, word is that Putin himself gave the orders for when and how to release John Podesta's hacked emails. And most sinister of all, he signed Podesta up for LinkedIn. That's not right. <laughs> That's not right. <laughs> well, at least one country out there has a hands-on leader. Maybe Putin can show Trump the ropes, you know. <laughs> Don't worry, Donald. I will take care of intelligence briefings. You go meet with Kanye. <laughs> you meet with Kanye. <laughs> you say do svidania. <laughs> do svidania too easy. <laughs> do svidania too easy. <laughs> but why would Putin do it is the question. Why did he go to all this trouble? Well, according to a former ambassador to Russia, Putin has a vendetta against Hillary Clinton dating back to 2011 when she called for a full investigation of fraud and intimidation in Russia's parliamentary elections. That was a fishy election. There were multiple votes cast by different versions of the same old lady. <laughs> She's got small ones, small ones, small ones. <laughs> so Putin hacked the election because of a grudge against Hillary? That is so lame. There are so many better reasons to get revenge on America. Economic sanctions, NATO expansion, Sean Connery's accent in the hunt for Red October. <laughs> yes. Huh. Yes. Uh, I'd like a place in Montana, please. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> of course, we've been hearing a lot about Trump's cabinet picks this week. For Secretary of State, he chose Exxon CEO and farmhand porn name Rex Tillerson. <laughs> Passing over, Whoa. passing over Mitt Romney, which at this point is an election year tradition. <laughs> During the campaign, Romney harshly criticized Trump, calling him a phony, which might sound tame, but phony is the worst swear word Mitt Romney knows. <laughs> Go phony yourself, you mother phonier. <laughs> now, reportedly. Trump was willing to put the bad blood behind them on one condition. He asked Romney to publicly say he was wrong about Trump. He was even willing to coach him. Wrong, Next, wrong, uh, wrong, uh, wrong, reaction. wrong. <laughs> Didn't happen, though. <laughs> Didn't happen. Romney wouldn't do it. I'm surprised Trump thought Romney would offer an apology because the title of Romney's book is literally No Apology. <laughs> I guess Trump didn't read uh, the front of it. <laughs> oh, today, it was also reported that Trump has approached Sylvester Stallone for a position in his administration. That's right, Rocky himself. Though, I hear Putin is still pushing for Ivan Drago. <laughs> According to sources, Sly's job would be chairman of the National Endowment for the Arts. It makes sense, because Stallone loves art so much that he literally sprints up the stairs when he's going to the Philadelphia Art Museum. <laughs> now, it's still, it's still over a month until Trump's inauguration, when he'll take the oath of office with one hand raised and the other hand on a stack of his own headshots. <laughs> the president-elect's team, evidently, is having trouble booking stars for the event, but a member of the inaugural committee said, Elton John is going to be doing our concert on the mall. To which Sir Elton's publicist said, incorrect, he will not be performing. There's no truth in this at all. <laughs> so we'll put you down for a maybe. <laughs> well, uh, that's too bad. I was really looking forward to Elton singing, hold me closer, tiny hand, sir. <laughs> Things are so bad in the inaugural planning that not one D.C. area marching band has applied to march in Trump's inauguration parade. And you know, wow. not wow. one. You can't get one. Not one. That's and serious. you know the party is lame when the band doesn't want to come. Hey. Uh, 
you know what? Ask the chess team. Maybe they'll go. <laughs> We're going to stay home and clean our spit valves. <laughs> they are so desperate. According to insiders, the Trump team dangled ambassadorships to lure A-list inauguration <laughs> singers. That sounds great. Uh, Prime Minister uh, Netanyahu, Ambassador Gaga is here to see you. Uh, Bibi Gaga, Gaga Bibi. So it looks like the inaugural entertainment is just going to be the Trump family jug band. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. James Franco is here. But when we return, my friend Gil Peaches. Stick around.